evening, everyone. So this is Triple A Live here at the Education Channel. This is your host, Attorney Amir April M. Alcazar, airing every Wednesdays from 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and all our social media platforms. You may like, subscribe, and follow us. And we hope that you will continue to tune in to all our programs on the Education Channel. So for tonight, I'm very fortunate to be interviewing two great resource persons from education, and they're um, airing from Japan. So first of all, ladies first, let me introduce Professor Cecilia Noemi Silva and then Professor George Mano. So can you give some greetings, please, Professor Silva? Um, good evening. Thank you very much, April, for your very, very nice invitation. And to Professor George Mano, please, some greetings to our viewers. Yeah, thank you, April, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, and I hope uh, that uh, I can say something that is useful to the people who watch this video. Yes. So our AAA Live is being viewed by those um, stakeholders in the education sector, specifically our students, faculty members, administrators, and those who have an interest in the education sector in the Philippines and elsewhere. And uh, for your information, of course, Professor Silva and Professor Manu have been in the Philippines. Um, they were actually participants in this very uh, immersive program that we had called the Teachers Helping Teachers Program. So I will be asking them more about their impressions of our country and, of course, their experience with Teachers Helping Teachers. But I think the best uh, way to begin our great discussion is to really ask them to recall how it was when they were young because we are supposed to be perpetual students in the education sector. So let me ask, um, Cecilia, could you remember as a young person, what were your interests and how it eventually led you to choose your field of study? Yes, it was many, many years ago, but I still remember. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in high school, my main interests were, of course, language, uh, English, and literature. Uh -huh, right. I, well, uh, and music, of course. I loved those things. So I was sure that I wouldn't be an engineer or a lawyer. Um, I was thinking whether to become uh, a translator of English yes. or a journalist. I, went actually, I wanted to be a journalist because I wanted to travel, but not travel um, as, uh, for holidays. I wanted traveling to be my way, my way of life. So I decided to become a journalist and then after social communication, I went to the faculty of um, languages mm -hmm. and studied English. Uh, first I became a translator, uh, mainly a legal translator. Yes. And then I decided to go on with, uh, to be a teacher of English. It was not actually one of my first choices, but I discovered that I loved um, teaching. So the teaching career won over the journalism. Yes. So I think that's going to be very interesting also for everybody's information. So Cecilia came originally from Argentina, something that is in common with us, our uh, Spanish uh, cultural heritage in the Philippines. Okay, turn you over now to George. How about you coming again from a totally different uh, field of study initially and also your background? So maybe you can recall a little bit about your uh, youth and how you eventually decided to be in your current field of study. Yeah, I think I think I entered this career by accident. Really? Uh, yeah, when I was younger, mm -hmm. I was uh, very interested in sports. I was very good at sports, and I was yeah. also very good at school. Mm -hmm. um, school was easy for me. Yes. Uh, hold Professional on a student. <laughs> yeah, I, so um, when I got to college, I thought I was going to be a... Um, astrophysicist oh yes wow uh, and I because I liked math but mm -hmm. um, the university I went to Indiana University required people to take this very low-level math class and I had mm -hmm. already had calculus in high school mm -hmm. and uh, I said okay if you're gonna force me to take this really low-level math class then I'll take four different classes mm -hmm. and whatever I like I'm going to major in 
Really? And, uh, so I took four different subjects, and I really liked the history class, mm -hmm. so I became a history major. I see. And uh, it was a good choice because uh, I, Indiana University actually had some very famous uh, history professors, and I learned a lot from them. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, I got my bachelor's degree, a dual degree in history in German, mm -hmm. and then a master's degree in history, yes. and I couldn't get a job. <laughs> Despite uh, the master's degree. <laughs> right, there were just too many teachers out there. And yeah. um, so then I went back and I got a law degree, like, mm -hmm. like you. Yes. <laughs> and uh, my timing was always bad. I couldn't get a job. Really? There were too many lawyers. <laughs> when <was> this happening? <laughs> That's the way it is in the U.S. They're kind of cycles. And if your timing yeah. is bad, mm -hmm. you graduate at the wrong time, your field is has too many people in it. And uh, mm -hmm. so anyway, I decided to go back to teaching. Yes. And uh, at that time period, uh, one of my friends, a Japanese friend, Mm -hmm. had just gotten married and he was in the u.s for his honeymoon and he said george what are you doing yes and, and i said i'm looking for a teaching job mm -hmm. and he said why don't you teach in japan yeah why not I thought, yeah why not and i thought i'd go for a year mm -hmm. you know make some money and come back and i ended up staying 13 years in japan uh-huh and um <laughs> that was my first time actually yeah Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've gone to other countries. I taught in uh, Kazakhstan. I taught mm -hmm. in Afghanistan, in yeah. um, Kuwait, mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm back in Japan. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think let's now focus on like what you were saying, eventually the convergence of teaching as a profession, and specifically for um, the teaching of English. Um, to, as a second language because you mentioned about the countries that you were actually um, teaching English in and definitely in those countries it's either a foreign language or a second language so maybe I can just ask you about specifically like George you mentioned about those countries where you had actually taught English so how would you um, differentiate for example the techniques that you actually use in these different countries and between English teaching English as a second language and as a foreign language you're asking me? Yes, please. Um, well, uh, the techniques are more or less the same everywhere, but the emphasis is different. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the, the big problem is speaking. Yes. And the Japanese are very shy and um, reluctant to speak. Mm -hmm. And for example, in Kuwait, um, they have very high level of uh, ability to speak English. Yeah. But their their writing skills are very poor, so the, the focus is more on writing over there. Yes. So it uh, really the techniques are the same. It's just the the focus, um, mm -hmm. the emphasis in, in the country. It's a little different. bit different. Yes. And in Cecilia's case, you were mentioning because of course Spanish would be your, your mother tongue. And how would you actually make this transition of um, English being a second language for yourself? Um, and teaching that um, also to those um, who will view English as a second language as, or as a third language? Well, I was, um, I'm trying to remember what made me come here because it has to do with my teaching English or my teaching Spanish. Exactly. Um, yeah, and now I remember. I was, I had just become a teacher of English Mm -hmm. And I was going to finish something else. It means that one stage was finishing, and I had to decide what to do. Yeah, really? Maybe just like George? <laughs> yes, and I was looking for something, and well, I could go on teaching English at a school, but somehow when I was doing my, my training, um, at the university, I saw the announcement of a scholarship for um, uh, for graduate studies. Mm -hmm. So I decided to take it um, to, to come to Japan. I thought it's only one year and a half. Mm -hmm. This was for the teacher's training, was it? Yes. Uh, for, yeah, for teacher training as a... Um, teacher training for one year. Yes. Yes. And I saw the announcement and I 
decided to come. So instead, and then when I finished uh, the graduate studies, mm -hmm. instead of going back to my country and go and uh, teach in English, I stayed in Japan but to teach um, Spanish. To teach Spanish then. <laughs> At English, right? <laughs> at English, yes. yes. Uh, at the beginning level, the, the, the skills are more or less the same. The, um, yeah, the emphasis and the structures are pr pretty much the same in English and in Spanish. Yes, because of uh, the yeah. Uh, for the sake of theory in Spanish, uh, we take all the theories from English teaching. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think it's more or less a, a, a common ground. Yes, for everyone. Yes. So, um, since you are both actually into language teaching, so, um, George, specifically now, what advice can you give exactly to our students? Because language is actually going to be the key towards any field of study that they may eventually decide on. So whether they're going to be an astrophysicist, a lawyer, or even a teacher, so language is going to be the key. So what would be your advice, whether it's in English or Spanish or any other language, but I think most specifically because of the uh, importance of English now as an international language? Well, I'd say, first of all, learn the language very well. Mm -hmm. Be very good at it. If it's going to be in English, learn English very well. Um, read a lot. That's how you improve your vocabulary. And know your subject very well. And also, uh, watch other people. Um, see how other people are doing it. A, a lot of people, there are a few people who are natural teachers who are very good right from the beginning. But most mm -hmm. people are not like that. I wasn't like that. I, I probably was a terrible teacher at first. But... <laughs> But I, okay. I, I I watched other teachers, and I thought, this person's doing something that's very good, it's very interesting. Yes. I'm going to try that. And if you keep, if you're willing to improve yourself, if you're willing to watch other people and learn yes. from them, eventually you will be a good, competent teacher. So I'd say, uh, first of all, know your subject very well, and secondly, um, Watch other people, see what they're doing, and, and take their ideas. Uh, any good idea, uh, uh, you should uh, adapt and, and incorporate into your teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for, for that advice. And Cecilia, of course, we know that Spanish is actually also uh, widely used in many countries in the world. So despite the fact, of course, that we know English to be the international language, what sort of advice could we also give to our students, those who are really interested in language learning and eventually teaching? Yes, um, that's true that Spanish is getting more and more popular. Yes. But I don't think um, it, that is understood. So it is regarded as uh, an exotic language and not as a language that will be very, very important for communication in a few years, from now on in a few years. Mm -hmm. So my advice is to study Spanish for the sake of communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, not only for traveling and that kind of things, but also for commercial reasons, for political reasons. Yes. It's getting more and more powerful. Yes, getting more important. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about your involvement with teachers helping teachers because now we're moving into the realm from like your language um, as a field of study and specifically in your involvement with the teachers helping teachers. So um, can you please give like your first experience, George, um, with teachers helping teachers and specifically what really drew you to the organization and your involvement in it? Yeah, that was the time when I just started doing um, conferences, international conferences. Yes. And um, as I mentioned just a little while ago, I wanted to improve my teaching. I wanted to see how other teachers doing it, uh, how they teach. And uh, conferences were a great place to see the best, uh, the best teachers in the world or best teachers in, in that area. Yeah. And um, I met uh, a person named Bill Balsamo, whom you, whom you know very well, and Cecilia knows very well. Yes. And he was the founder and organizer of Teachers Helping Teachers. Mm -hmm. And it just happened we lived in the same city in Japan. 
Yes. And uh, he suggested to me that I join, and um, I can't remember what my first THT project was. I think the Philippines might have been my second or third one, I'm not sure. Bangladesh was the first one for both of us in 2005. Oh, was it? 2006. 2006, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't know if Bangladesh was my first or not. I might have been my second or third one. I. I don't remember what, what the first one was. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, that's how I got involved, and um, I. It was a great a great opportunity not only to to learn, but also to experience how English was taught in different countries, mm -hmm. and the um, difficulties that teachers have. For example, in the Philippines, uh, we were in countryside in um, uh, what's the island? I forgot the name of the Did island. Remember Bulacan. <laughs> yeah, but what's the name of the island that we were on? Um, uh, uh, well, we're, we went to the we went to a, a village school. Ah, yes, Mindoro. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mindoro, Mindoro Island. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that was that was a great experience, um, going out into the countryside to a little village and seeing how the teachers teach yes. English in a place like that with very limited resources because, exactly. it's, because it's the countryside. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and Cecilia, how about in your case, because you were very much involved with teachers helping teachers from the very beginning in Bangladesh. Yes, I remember it was 2005 at a joint conference. A friend of mine told me, come here, I want to, you to introduce to a, a friend of mine. And the friend was Bill. Yes. So I talked to Bill for the first time and then I met Pat. And Bill told me about the project. And I joined it. And the first experience was in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And then from Bangladesh, I moved to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It was a great experience because I have never done a workshop before, only presentations. Yes. But the workshop, it's completely different, the strategies, the content, everything. So I learned a lot. And I not, not only learned preparing the workshops, but also while uh, during the, um, the workshops from the participants, they were so active, so such a nice, so, so nice people. Mm -hmm. And then Vietnam, I remember that it was very nice because one of the participants got sick. So we all, all together, we, uh, we covered him somehow. <laughs> A great work, great, great work. And then another time in Bangladesh, there was curfew, and uh, it was not a coup d'etat, but uh, it was, everything stopped, it was a curfew. I felt a bit um, unsafe, but everything uh, was so good, the organization, and the way we turned one event to make another event, yeah. <laughs> it was great, mm -hmm. great um, experience. And then in the <coughs> Philippines, a few times in the Philippines, yes. Mm -hmm. um, each place has its certain characteristics and lessons. Yes. I remember from Laos, for example, um, working with the students and then um, I stayed in the house of one of the um, of the teachers, yes. and uh, so I walked through the village, and then I saw how everybody was washing up dishes without without a strong soap. Mm -hmm. For me, it was quite a learning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so of course, uh, in the case of the Philippines, so THT teachers helping teachers, we started it actually in 2008, um, just because um, I had started my interaction with Mr. Bill Balsamo in 2005, who unfortunately passed away even before we were able to begin the program in the Philippines. But this was like one of the very important wishes that he had, that I continue with the teachers helping teachers despite his passing. And so uh, finally we were able to have the first group of teachers helping teachers uh, volunteers in August of 2000. And of course we've carried out as much as we can um, 
until until now. Uh, we we are continuing. The very last one was in February 2020, before the COVID pandemic. So let me now bring, of course, touching on the teachers helping teachers. We talk about like the international relations that we have been able to foster. And um, let me go back um, to you, George, and ask you, like, in your youth, did you have an interest, really, in international relations, or did you think that you would go on to have a career trajectory that involved um, being in multiple countries or having interaction with people from different countries? Definitely, uh, because my parents were both immigrants from yes. Europe. Yes. And so uh, I was always around people from different countries who were speaking different languages. Yes. And probably when I was a child, I spoke English very poorly because uh, I didn't hear English uh, that much in my house. Yes. I heard other languages. So I always thought that eventually I was going to travel and I was going to see other places. So, um, strangely enough, the first time I left the United States wasn't until I was... 21 years old, so uh, yeah. kind of late for a lot of people. But uh, Yes, but since very much of a life transforming event, I suppose. Yes, and I've been in 50 countries <laughs> since then, so um, anyway, it's been a great experience. And I recommend travel to anyone because travel opens up your eyes, mm -hmm. you get uh, new ideas, new experiences from other people, and just meeting other people mm -hmm. uh, changes your way of uh, thinking about things. Yes. And Cecilia, how about you in your case, um, coming, as I've said, from like Argentina and having had this opportunity to live uh, in a foreign country for a um, long period of time already in Japan. So what can you actually advise our students um, to have the kind of immersive experience that they could possibly partake of in international relations? Well, actually, my dream was having um, a job that involves uh, traveling, but yeah. I had no idea how to how to achieve that. I worked ten years in international business and I had company, and of course, so I met people from the U.S., from Australia, from New Zealand, and I had no idea how. To, to go to those places, how to travel. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I saved, saved up money and then I went one month or two months, I don't remember, uh, for a homestay in the UK. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to my country, I mm -hmm. thought, and now what? I don't have money to own traveling. Yes. And I saw the announcement of the scholarship for Japan. Yes, and then I understood. Yes, this is the the, 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 the way that I can that I can travel. Yes, scholarship. I don't have money. Uh -huh. so I took the scholarship and I came here, and then there were so many, so many roads open for me, so many doors open for me. So my advice to pursue your dreams for sure, there will be an open door. Yes, definitely. So I think uh, for our students, of course, um, now they're at this juncture of their lives where they are making um, decisions or they could possibly make, be making decisions about what field of study that they can actually uh, pursue. Also making that decision on whether they would want to be in their home country and to have these other experiences. And so um, among the many skills and competencies um, that you believe young people should develop, what do you think will be the top three skills that they should have in order to really have an enriching, enhanced um, career trajectory in the future? George? Wow, that's a tough question. Three yes, skills. and I hope that uh, <laughs> we can actually give some advice <laughs> to our students. Okay, uh, what, what age students are we talking about? Uh, well, most of our students are all going to be pursuing their field of studies, going to college, that's the first one. And then secondly, of course, those who are going to be graduating from college and moving to, let's say, employment or the workplace environment. Okay, well, I'll go back to the first thing I said uh, okay. a while ago, which is that uh, learn your language or learn English very well, whatever your language is, or learn English very well. You should be good in, in your language or in English to communicate with other people. Mm -hmm. I would also recommend knowing something about business because mm -hmm. um, traveling, um, you're going to be dealing 
a lot with money in different places and uh, money is so important in life you can't as you know you can't live without money and to, yeah. to to know how to save it how to invest it how to spend it is so important yeah. uh, third what would be my third piece of advice uh, that don't be afraid to take um, uh, or to, to make mistakes and to learn from your mistakes yes. that's what I would say yeah, so be fearless I think for the youth right <laughs> but not 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 foolishly don't not be foolishly, foolishly yes fearless. but don't be afraid to make mistakes because um, you will learn from your mistakes yes and likewise Cecilia you mentioned about like your experience actually in international business but you found out that you couldn't really achieve your dreams in traveling by working in an international business firm right so what sort of advice could you give to our students one those that are deciding what field of study to, to actually pursue um, in, in the school and then secondly if they are going to be finishing um, their undergraduate or college degrees and now um, about to join in the workplace environment? Uh, well, first, to be loyal to your dreams. If you have a dream, you can turn it into a goal. And if you have a goal, you can open a door and then go on through that road. And I quite agree with, uh, with George. Money is also important. So uh, skills in business will won't do any harm. Yes. Uh, study, study hard, but study what you like to um, mm -hmm. think of what you want to be and then study that. And um, what else? Oh, that, that was my experience. If you study hard and have uh, good grades, you can get a scholarship. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> so very well said, I think, for both our, our resource uh, persons for it, um, tonight's episode on AAA Live. So maybe uh, I could also just give a little bit of like uh, my experience on how I met George and Cecilia. So I was also in Japan as a scholar of the Japanese government. And definitely I could agree with Cecilia that being involved in education, even from the time I was a student until now, um, has really opened uh, a lot of the doors that I've been able to take on as opportunities for myself. So so I think that's always um, always been my uh, objective to, at the very least, vicariously uh, provide the opportunities to, to the students so that they could partake of those enriching and enhancing activities that might aid them in their career and in their future life. So can you give some uh, last words um, to our televiewers, George, before we end our uh, very nice discussion for this evening? So again, to all our viewers, those in the education sector or faculty, students, and administrators, or those who have any interest in the education sector, please. Well, the I guess I would say that education is a lifelong endeavor that you okay. never stop learning. And um, embrace it, enjoy it, and make it part of your life. Yes, and Cecilia, likewise. But the same, if you make a career in education, you will be a student all your life. <laughs> so lifelong learning is definitely the hallmark of education. So it's been a most uh, fruitful and productive uh, discussion that we've had here on Triple A Live. So again, uh, please join us every Wednesdays from 8 to 9 p.m. So this has been your host, Attorney Amian April M. Alcazar. Uh, please join us always uh, in our social media platforms, in YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll see you again next time. So stay safe and healthy, everyone. Until the next time. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening.